Good morning, all. Good morning. So um, I just was uh, looking through uh, some of the uh, the news data, and I posted this earlier with regards to the pound, and it says here that Europe's biggest asset manager. In fact, let me just uh, make sure that I can uh, make this a bit bigger. Right. So uh, it says here that Europe's biggest asset manager is shorting the pound on the conviction that the Bank of England will start cutting rates in the first half of 2024. So uh, pretty much they are definitely, uh, you know, bearish for uh, various reasons. So definitely have a read of this and they think that prices could actually go back down to the uh, to the 120s. And um, uh, basically the, the, the summary really of this is that that um, the pound has to be revalued, yeah? So over the past uh, week or since FOMC, we've had a situation where um, the, let me just get my pen tool up, and um, we've had a situation where we've had a dovish, um, a dovish Fed, yeah? And the reason being is because um, of, you know, inflation is, is coming, you know, down to their 2% target, Right, um, the economy, right, is doing actually pretty pretty well, or the best uh, out of you know when you think about Europe and you think about the UK and even Japan. In fact, it's the best in you know in the in the currencies that we trade, um, which is for me is a bit surprising that they would uh, they would, they would be actually be quite dovish. But as I've uh, kind of uh, spoken about in the group, um, is that they are cutting rates really. I think because uh, the there's an, an election cycle right coming up and although the Fed um, are not necessarily political I do think that there is probably pressure on them from the Biden administration to um, to cut rates so that you know things look better um, and the economy starts to grow into the election cycle because you're uh, cutting borrowing and lending costs right and so I have no doubt that the, uh, the Federal Reserve will cut rates. Right, but in isolation, and when I say isolation, if you're just solely looking at the uh, the Federal Reserve and what they're doing, and the, and, and the, you know, the, in terms of rates, then you know a lot of traders would say, oh, well, we're we're, we're bearish on the dollar. But um, now we've had the situation where inflation has come out for the uh, for the UK. And um, it was uh, it came down more than expected, which is basically fueling um, rate cut bets. And remember, there is uh, the leading and lagging um, effect in terms of rate cuts. It's all about who is uh, the first to cut rates, and the, the 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 central bank that is first to cut rates um, is the one you should really kind of short. And the uh, central banks that are uh, delaying their cuts or the last to cut should be the ones that you are really buying. Um, uh, in in effect, of, of course, there are you know nuances to that, but that's the general theme. So. Um, you know when when FOMC came out and the uh, the Fed were dovish and they were almost pricing in cuts at the time the, uh, the 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 Bank of England was still hawkish right because the, the, their inflation data hadn't come out now their inflation data has come out and it's come out you know worse than expected I say worse than expected better than expected in terms of the economy but in terms of uh, 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 price appreciation and devaluation it means that the um, the pound should devalue because if inflation is coming down to their two percent target, yeah, it means that the um, the bank are likely to start to enter into their rate cutting cycle sooner, yeah, because if it stays you know well well above or it's not seen as coming down anytime soon, then um, central banks will tend to either hold or potentially hike if they feel they can get away with hiking and the economy can take uh, rate hikes. But now that inflation is decelerating, disinflation coming into the market more than expected, the market is now pricing in new um, uh, rate cuts in the you know the first half of the year, whereas you know before the inflation data, it was probably more second half of the year. They were seen as being the most uh, one of the most hawkish uh, central banks, or out of at least the uh, the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England was seen as you know the one of the last to start uh, 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 cutting rates. So, what does that mean overall? So, 
I believe that there is an opportunity to short the pound dollar, right? Pound dollar, because the, uh, the I think the market has been caught offside in terms of the, uh, the pound valuation. And so although you have a situation where the pound, um, sorry, the dollar was uh, was was weak, right? When you and you know and and the pound was was holding up. Now that situation has changed. Now you have a situation where both currencies are are weak, and so when you have both currencies are in a position where they're both cutting, then it starts to become uh, what are the differences in terms of why would you really want to buy the uh, the dollar over the uh, the pound? Now one of the obviously the reasons is who's cutting first. Um, a major reason as to why, uh, also as well, the, uh, the 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 dollar may strengthen over the pound is the fact that their economies are doing you know uh, uh, at different stages, right? The the pound are basically uh, flat on the day in terms of growth, and the uh, the the U.S. economy is something like I think like five point two percent or something there or thereabouts, right? Five point two percent. Uh, recent data actually month for month data for the UK came in at zero minus zero point three percent something like that so it's not looking good stagflating economy um, not doing good at all so I believe as much as I am um, uh, um, bearish on the dollar against some currencies right so for example the Australian dollar I would buy the Australian dollar against the US dollar um, the Japanese yen, for example, I would buy against the US dollar, yeah, in, in the hope that obviously with the Japanese yen, um, that the Bank of Japan are looking to hike rates next year, yeah, so that makes sense. One is cutting, one is hiking, you buy the yen over the dollar. Um, but in a situation where you've got the pound dollar, it's basically who's the worst of the worst or who's the best of the worst. And out of these two in a straight fight, um, considering GDP and where they are, and now that the market has to also revalue the pound, I think they're going to revalue the pound lower against the dollar. The dollars, the pound dollar's recent, you know, move to the upside was based off of, and you know, in, in on a price chart was really kind of based off of the uh, the pound uh, holding rates for a lot longer. So you saw on the um, on the pound dollar, uh, you know, prices pretty much going to the upside. Now. That has changed to the uh, to to now rate cuts being priced in. So now I think we were at the ceiling was like one two eight, right? One two eight, uh, one dollar twenty eight. Yeah. Now that is looking like the ceiling because um, I think now that the, the 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 pound has to be revalued against the dollar a lot lower. So on the pound dollar, there are there is a chance. Yeah, and that's what basically. Um, the uh, Europe's biggest asset manager is basically saying in this article, yeah, is saying that the pound uh, should actually want to start to fall against, you know, paying for the pound. And so um, if you scroll up and, and, you know, even more, you can start to see uh, here I posted this and this was from the Guardian blog talking about investors bet on Bank of England interest rate cuts early next year. Yeah, so we've got that going on. Um, we've got uh, Goldman Sachs brings forward Bank of England rate cut to May from June previously. Again, the shifting sands continue to play out in central banks rate cut pricing. First Bank of England cut now priced in for May next year. And it, again, we, you know, we go up, you know, inflation metrics worry in the Bank of England starting to ease. So inflation coming down means more rate, you know, rate cuts are potentially, uh, you know, coming sooner. Um, biggest downside shock since 2021. Uh, and scroll up as well. And again, we see here financial markets pricing first rate cut as soon as March. And again, talking about the uh, UK inflation surprises, but I was trying to scroll up just to see about the economy, right? So again, bond fund uh, giant Pimco warns of hard landing for the U UK economy. And if they, again, this starts to happen, this gives more incentive for uh, the bank actually to start to cut rates uh, because if there's a hard landing, meaning you know some sort of recession um, and recession fears, then to boost the economy, you need to basically cut rates and if they have inflation coming down, it gives them leeway to do that. So I believe 
um, that although um, we had a long talk about the you know being being bearish uh, on the dollar for 2024, I think you know in the first half of the year or at least the first few months against the pound, I think that the the, the the, the dollar should actually appreciate also as well. There is, um, I think, oh, not that. Where was it now? Yeah, it was here. You know, seasonals favor stronger euro into year end, yeah? But if you look here, right, what you'll see is that the, um, the euro tends to be negative, um, you know, in the first eight weeks of the year. And now, you know, what has the euro got to do with the pound and the dollar? But if the pound, uh, if the euro and the dollar tend to work inversely, right? So, you know, euro dollar tends to outperform, right? Euro down, uh, dollar goes up, yeah? And appreciates in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the first eight weeks of the year. Then, you know, the logic should follow that if the pound, um, you know, replace that with the pound, GBP, and I'm not saying that the data is going to be, you know, the same is going to be different. But when you when you take into account everything we've spoken about in terms of the pound having to be revalued, um, the, the the dollar typically strengthening, um, you know, in the first eight weeks, two months of the year, um, I think that kind of adds up to uh, some at least some dollar strength coming into at least the first two months of the year before again going into March, April. Um, and then the uh, the um, the Fed potentially ramping up uh, rate cut um, rhetoric. So um, of course this is all dependent upon data. Nobody knows, but again, if we're wrong about the data that comes out, and no one's going to be right 100%, no one can forecast exactly what's going to happen. But this is the trade idea, and I think that um, as long as the data supports this narrative, then I think in fact the pound um, the pound dollar is going to be uh, a decent trade idea going into 2024. All right, guys, uh, take care, speak soon, and um, again, wish you all a merry, merry Christmas.